Hey everyone, it's Al from Boston. How you doing? Uh, I have with me my very good friend, Days Past Kyle. Kyle, say hello to everybody. Aloha. Aloha. Every, I've known Kyle for years, and he's always greeting me with aloha. Uh, he has been my long-term friend from the Marine Corps. He was my squad leader. Uh, he's a very, very smart man, and uh, he's got some very interesting things to say, and I want to share it with you guys. So hold on one second. Again. Okay. All right. And, and double check your mic because you're kind of weaving in and out of there a little bit. Is this better, Ernie? Uh, yeah, good. that's much better. Great. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Citadel, the SEC, and the FTDs and the premises that are involved in this. Let's stop being naive. Okay. That's the first thing I want to mention. We all know that this game is rigged. You got to come to terms with this, right? These guys are all chummy with each other. The people of the SEC know the guys over on Wall Street. They're former Wall Street guys themselves. And they've got this thing rigged to where, you know, it's going to screw over guys like us, people like us. And it's just the truth. The problem is the SEC is too small. It's actually kind of a tiny organization when you think about it in comparison to other government agencies. And there is a lack of enforcement, which is why these guys are doing the things that they actually do. There is a lack of, uh, of actual enforcement and actual oversight, which emboldens people like uh, Citadel and you know, other hedge funds and whatnot. Um, they're more likely to do daring things because they're just playing out too big to investigate. A lot of working parts. SEC doesn't have the time or the money. And you know, in, in the world of business and the world of stocks and stuff, time is money. So they don't want to slow down the machine. That's their real reason behind it, plus that they're chumps. But Kyle, I think you'll agree with me on this. The entire system is fraudulent. Absolutely. And this is something that, that I really try to, to emphasize to people. It's like it, so many people today are, are caught up in like the, the partisan politics. And you've got to understand this isn't about Democrats or Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are trying to protect this system. Trump protected it when he was in office. Biden is protecting it now. He just, I, I couldn't believe it. He put freaking uh, Jerome Powell back in office <laughs> for another four years. That is the most insane thing. I mean, I just, I, I am flabbergasted by that. Uh, the, the sheer volumes of money this man has been printing. He is driving inflation and, every, you know, everybody is suffering because of it. And, uh, and they're just kind of laughing it off and saying, let's let's do another four years of, of six percent plus inflation and see how they do. You know, it's absolutely <laughs> crazy. But, uh, you know, that's something that, that, that really has to be understood is that that both of these sides, they're both very wealthy and they're only interested in protecting the very wealthy. Exactly. And they don't want the slaves like us to revolt. That's what it comes down to. So it is what it is. Uh, I think we, we're the people that drive this machine at the end of the day. And if we break down, well, the system breaks down, they lose their money, it goes from there. But if you think it's bad now, look at just the stuff that we've uncovered, okay? That's just the stuff that we can see, the one we can prove or at least cause a shadow of a doubt, uh, you know, on, on the likelihood that this is, you know, being, being manipulated. Could you just imagine what it's like, you know, uh, when it's all uncovered, when everything is exposed, right? The hidden, the tucked away, and the deleted. Everyone remembers that picture of Iron Mountain in front of the Citadel headquarters in Chicago. If you don't know who Iron Mountain is, they're a uh, company that basically stores or destroys confidential files. And, 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 and uh, basically, they're, they're a data company, really. They, they store stuff in secure servers. They uh, will cover they're, your they're, they're a glorified paper. For shredder yeah and they have shredders and burners and this that and the other but uh those are the people you hire if you want to get rid of your documents and they were sitting right outside of citadel's office that i'll tell you enough right if you think it's bad now just imagine when you know and like i said it's just, we only see the tip of the iceberg when everything is uncovered if it ever gets uncovered you will see that everything that you know which is the stock market is one big sham and it's all lies and it's all bullshit this is no longer a finance game. This is an intelligence game. Like I'm almost like a military espionage type intelligence game, completely fraudulent. And what they show is what they want you to believe. Okay. 
let's look at the data, the authoritative data sources. They go un underreported. Level twos are bullshit. The volume, the FTDs, they, 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 everything's all made up and, and it's all manufactured and procured by their coding. And they can make things appear and make things disappear through their coding. They do it just right so they don't raise enough suspicions or eyebrows, right? They, they classify certain orders a certain way if it reaches a certain amount and they slow down the machine so it doesn't you know, raise the price too high, this, that, and the other. That's how they do all this stuff. It's through coding in their dark pools, right? We know this. They have protocols in place for runaway stocks like, like we had in January and then uh, with AMC and GME, right? And this is the best part for them, right? Listen to this. They have a contingency if they actually get caught and are uncovered. To mitigate legal ramifications, they, are, they will claim that they are justified in reporting bad data to the public because of technicalities. They see, in order to have this market to do it this way, you, you know, this, that, and the other, and they're going to pull a Colonel Jessup. You want me on that wall. You need, but they're going to pull some shit like that in front of federal court, and they're going to walk that way. That's how they always done it. They say, we need these in place. This isn't rigging the game. This is making sure it's fair. But of course, we know better. We know that they're both arsonists and firemen. Uh, forgive me for using that, but it's just the way I feel about it. Um, but they have a plan, even if they get caught. Believe me, they do. Um, I don't believe they've ever covered. Now, this is just my opinion. You don't have to believe me. Take it as a grain of salt. I don't think they've covered. I don't think they've covered in years. And it's not just AMC and GME. I think there's other stocks. I think there's millions of other stocks that they've done this to over the years. And, and it's not just in American markets. They've got all these other places. But let's talk about the FTDs, the keep away game, right? So Citadel has a bunch of uh, other hedge funds that they spawned up. I saw it in another video that uh, when you work for Ken Griffin, you work for him for X amount of years, you make a little bit of money, like $30, $40 million, whatever, $100 million, And then you say to Ken, Ken, I need to break off and do my own thing. Absolutely. Ken will give you his first, your first billion dollars to make you look credible and so you can get your own clients. But of course, Ken owns your ass. Right. And if you have an if you have a, a fund uh, and that becomes Ken's disposable uh, hiding place, if you will, Ken's got interest there. Right. So how they're doing is they're they're taking the FTDs that they had before. This is before, uh, you know, the, the last couple of years. They and they keep it at these different funds and they bounce it around from place to place and they do it through the dark pool. And it's a trick. Now, when it got too big during the AMC and GME uh, gamma squeeze. They were desperate trying to find a place to hide these FTDs. That's when that Citibank in Brazil, you know, came into the picture. They found a corrupt system in Brazil where they could offload these FTDs when the volume got too heavy. I think what happened was some of the fund managers were like, this is fucking, we don't want this on our book. This is toxic. You don't want all these FTDs on your books, right? And there's this disparity between what we own and what they've report. And you have to remember that that does exist, Okay. Um, and I want you to be aware that what we actually have in shares comparatively to what they are reporting, there's a massive disparity, huge. I'll go on to the next one. I want to talk about real quick, the SEC. All right. And then we'll get onto the meat and potatoes. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Okay. SEC, 4,000 employees, mostly run by former Wall Street executives and bankers. All right, they are the ones that run that business. You know, make no mistake about it. It's divided into these sections, these divisions, corporate finance, trading and markets, investment management, enforcement, which is the smallest one, by the way, economic and risk analysis. So the corporate finance, those are the big companies, the trading is us, investment management, so the little guys don't get screwed over. I, I don't actually know what the investment management is. I have to look through that a little bit further. Of course, we know what it does. And the economic and risk analysis, these are the people that report What's going on here to Powell and everybody else? This is how that works. Now, the SEC manages, uh, and not just the, America, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, the American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and 18 other smaller exchanges. 4,000 people trying to run about 20-something exchanges in the United States, not to include the, you know, managing the, uh, the alternative trading systems and stuff. They don't even do that. Now, the occasionally, the SEC will make a big bust. You see them on Twitter bragging about it, right? It makes the public think that they're actually doing their job. And these little fines that they offer, uh, that they give to Citadel and whatnot, uh, which are very easily affordable, don't do the job. They do that because they're chums. And they want to look official. Why? Because these clowns that are uh, Citadel and Goldman, all these other places, all these other companies, 
They're all in bed with each other. It's incestuous. And they have the worst model, the worst model I've ever seen, self-reporting trust model. They expect these people to be honest. Listen, the biggest liars and thieves are not, are not in prisons and, 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 and correctional facilities across the country. They're on Wall Street. They're in Washington, D.C. They're working at your local bank because they're liars and thieves. Promise you. This is absolutely true. I'm not lying to you, right? The SEC doesn't have the manpower or the staff to do surprise audits on stocks. They get tips. That's how they work on them. They work on tips and they act on them, right? Sometimes their algorithms detect market anomalies. Help me out here. Market anomalies. Market anomalies. What word, what word are you going for? Anomaly <laughs> is probably it, right? Yeah. I just, I'm having a brain fart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, market anomalies. It detects unusual gains and gives it probability range to see what is a real trade. And it's like an actually coincidence that you actually made that kind of money, like crazy money, or what's is, oh, that's, a, that's clearly an inside tip. And I'll give you an example, right? Like an inside trade. Uh, if somebody shorts 100 million of Apple uh, down 12%, and they have information that Steve Jobs has cancer and they're releasing it later. Someone leaked that. Flags go up, right? If it's two hours before, uh, you know, it's on, on like a Thursday or Friday, they release the facts that Steve Jobs has, has cancer and there's a massive sell-off. That will raise a flag in their algorithm, right? But they don't have any real instruments that do fine-tooth combing in real time. They just don't have it for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I've talked to somebody that worked in the SEC. This is what they told me. They are very limited in staff. And they're also very under-equipped technology-wise. They think they have great stuff. They really don't. Uh, but banking and finances is a gentleman's game with gentleman's rules, okay? When I was a bit, when I'm a bit, when I'm at business school, when I go to these functions, everyone is very gentlemanly. They're very kind and considerate. And there's an understood, uh, tacit notion about things. Finance people, I notice in general, and, and I'm just I'm just a dumb grunt marine. I think they're fucking liars. I think these guys are full of shit. I think it's pretentiousness. I think uh, I'm not saying all of them, but a good portion of them that work on Wall Street, the Wall Street guys that I've met, and this is just ex 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 explicitly the Wall Street guys. They're liars. They're just so full of shit. They wear these two hundred, three hundred dollars shirts. They're just you know rocking these amazing watches and. And, 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 you know, just this, that, and the other, and there's a cockiness, there's an arrogance, and there's a, hey, I'm cool as a cucumber type of guy. And I just don't like them. I just don't like Wall Street guys, I guess. But if you take the self-reporting trust model, it's tantamount to asking the fox to guard the chicken coop. It's, there's no other way around it. That's what it is, okay? So with that in mind, uh, I am done with my SEC grant and why I don't like them. I want to turn this over to Kyle. I want Kyle to talk about the FTDs and the stuff we have uncovered with the FTDs. I'm going to turn it over to him right now. Uh, and let me just see this through. Okay. See if we can size that right. Is that better? Um, yeah, that's a lot better. Lovely. Um, so essentially, we were able to go through and pull all the raw data on the failures to deliver from, from the SEC. And uh, this is this is all stuff straight off the uh, the SEC website. However, uh, they're not particularly kind in how they uh, they release the data. It's all in in text files, and you have to parse through uh, every single uh, company that has has suffered uh, failures to deliver in that entire uh, time span. That frame uh, that that timing. Now, technically, we should have failures to deliver every single week. Uh, plus every quarter, because of the way the SEC chose to to supply the data, it's every uh, other week here for for each month. So we get the first half of the month, second half of the month, first half of the month, second half of the month, and so on and so forth. So our our compilation, it's not perfectly accurate, and it's it's just as as good an analysis of the data that we can we can work on. So. Um, keep in mind, uh, affairs deliver is, is generally on, uh, options contracts or, or call options. So, um, each week on Friday, the market closes, uh, with a certain number of calls in the money. Uh, and that's where a lot of this started is, uh, and, and how we were able to, to create gamma squeeze and how they have subsequently avoided 
trade uh, gamma squeezes down the row, and that's why we haven't been getting them constantly, is because uh, so for a gamma squeeze to work, um, you have a bunch of options that that all go green on Friday. They're they're all in the money, and that means they have three days to fill those options. So so by uh, end of business on Tuesday, those uh, of the next week, those options should be filled. If they did not hedge when they were writing the call option, if they did not hedge their supply, they have to purchase those uh, this, the associated amount of shares. And that's what, what is the underlying mechanism of driving up a gamma squeeze. Um, however, uh, after the first gamma squeeze that we had, the big one that ran it up to $70 a share for AMC, um, the, the market maker realized that they could avoid subsequent gamma squeezes by just going all out on FAO's deliver. Now, they were already failing to deliver, but it, they kicked it into high gear after that point. So uh, what we have here is uh, over the, the, the course of the year from, from January till now, we have 11 million con uh, options contracts that have failed to deliver, which is roughly 1.1 billion shares that are, are, are sitting there that, that will eventually have to be purchased. Okay, so at this point, we're not even, we're not talking about uh, short, how many times the, uh, the the uh, the the shares have been naked shorted or or anything like that. We have no idea because, uh, like Al was saying, there's there's no uh, requirement to report the number of shorts that you have. And since naked shorting is illegal, they're definitely not reporting those shorts. So we can only speculate at how many uh, uh, times the the times over the float has been shorted. This is a completely separate thing. So. These 1.1 billion shares will eventually be have to uh, have to be purchased back again, and and of course you know for for those of you who can do math in public that's twice the the float right there, we're already over the float by two. So from here uh, we can do further analysis because we know that in order to keep sustaining these fails to deliver. Uh, what they have been doing is creating synthetic shares. Now, a sh synthetic share, the, the easy way to think of it is, is just getting the DTCC to accept a, an IOU on a little piece of paper. But the, the technical aspect of it is a little bit more complex. Uh, what they've done instead is, or what they're actually doing is they're, they're taking uh, an at-the-money call and pairing it with a deep-in-the-money put in order to say, uh, basically say, we, we will purchase the share that we owe you sometime in the future. And that, that, uh, that pairing of the, the at the money call and the, uh, the deep in the money put is, is what secures that IOU. So what we've done on the, the next uh, form over here, if you could flip pages for me, Al. So neither of us are particularly math-handed people, uh, being the, the crayon eaters that we are. Uh, so we've gone through and just mechanically um, built the entire uh, summation here of each time a new set of synthetics is generated and then totalize them. Now, keeping in mind that at this point, because none of this data is reported, we're building it off of the, uh, the, the, the accurate number of FTDs, which were reported uh, at that 1.1 billion. Um, so this, these, this is all uh, speculative on the number of synthetic shares that are out there. We just know that those, uh, those failures to deliver have not been filled and they, they have persistently not been and filling them in order to avoid a gamma squeeze. So we calculated them all up uh, each time, every, every three weeks ultimately, because the, the market maker, unlike other uh, smaller hedge funds and so on, they, um, the market maker gets a 21 day leeway in, uh, before a failure to deliver kicks off, before they're penalized. 
So we've totalized these for every 21 days throughout the, the end of the month. And that gives us, if you'll scroll down a little bit more there, a theoretical maximum number of shares on, uh, of synthetic shares at 51 billion. Now, that is a little bit excessive. So even if we uh, take, say, a 50% uh, error margin on these um, synthetic shares, because this is assuming that, that uh, they're using shorter uh, options deals, uh, like uh, short monthly calls in order to, uh, to sustain these IOUs. Uh, as opposed to longer calls that they could potentially use and so on and so forth. So um, the theoretical, the, the whole idea is that we have a theoretical maximum of 51. That is, that is the highest number of, of synthetic shares that could be in circulation. Um, but we can slice that number any way we see fit. We can, we can use a 50% a margin of error, a 70% margin of error, and you're still going to come out with around, you know, 15, 20 billion shares in, in circulation or synthetic shares in circulation that will all have to be paid back. So the whole idea that we're coming to, and this is this is nothing to do with the shorts. This is just entirely due uh, to the market manipulation. We do concur that that the idea of 20 billion shares that have to be repurchased uh, by Citadel is a fairly accurate um, number of a, or, well, let's, let's go with the word plausible. It is a plausible number that of, of shares that they could potentially owe on in order to, uh, to have to clear this out. Now, once, once we actually get into the squeeze, once these guys are, are getting margin called on the regular and so on, they're, they're going to have to replace 10 times the float, you know, that's, that's, or more, potentially more, you know, we could, it, it, in, in, it, it could be up to a hundred times, you know, that that's, that's crazy, but, uh, but man, you know, they're, they're, that that's, what's going to have to happen. Um, and that's on top of the, the shorting that they've done all because they've continued to manipulate the market and, and, uh, try to prevent um, the natural flow of, of capitalism from taking place. So guys, uh, if you're looking to do the replicate this DD, it's very simple. It's the SEC website, type in AMC. The number we just read, this is all just from 2021. We haven't included from 2014, 2015, all the way up to now. In fact, 2017, we saw massive spikes massive spikes uh same th same exact thing you know gone up four or five hundred thousand uh contracts unfulfilled you know look at 2017 as a number uh for the for uh for for, for amc and the charts and you'll you'll see what i'm talking about but uh, i hope this puts a lot of uh ease in your mind on how many times they have to buy us out and why i believe this has the potential to go to a million dollars a share all we have to do is hold Kyle, uh, if I'm, am I correct by saying that as long as retail holds, this thing will reach a million dollars or could have the potential to reach a million dollars? Yeah, I mean, and we can we can get to the the mechanics of that really quickly, or just touch on the mechanics of that really quickly. Essentially, as as these guys are margin called out, uh, the the DTCC is going to put their stuff up for sale, and they're going to purchase at the lowest possible price. If the lowest possible price is $100, they're going to buy those shares at $100, but then they have to work their way up. So if the next set of shares is for sale at $10,000, they'll pay $10,000. And the, the whole idea is that we have a bunch of, of savvy apes here who are aware of the value of what they are holding. And everybody has a different number. They've all, you know, I've got my exit strategy. Uh, every, everybody's got their, their own setup here. But uh, the, the potential for being able to reach astronomically high numbers is there simply by virtue of the number of failures to deliver and synthetics that are out there, not even uh, counting the, the number of shorts, which we have no idea how many shorts are, are running around out there. So uh, you, can, you can price your shares at whatever you want 
but you will get that money as long as you are willing to wait until the DTC pays for that. Just like that. And yep. don't be so uh, eager, you know? You can go on with your life. This thing isn't going to happen overnight. So you can just go on with your life. You don't have to buy any more shares. Everything's been done for you. In fact, if you can do anything, just tell other people to buy, buy more, you know, keep these guys on their toes. Um, but listen, Ape Nation, you asked me to provide the DD. This is my DD. This is my thesis. Uh, Kyle, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, as always, you have been a Marine brother to me. You have always been faithful, and I appreciate you coming on here and helping me with this. Uh, so I'm happy thank to you help. For that. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. So, Apes, listen, share this with every swinging you know what. So send it to everybody you know. Show this to every guy that has a doubt to see how much that we have to, they have to buy back. Anyone that tells you, oh, we got to buy a bracket between ten and 15000 or or whatever nonsense they're coming out with, show this to everybody, your favorite uh, uh, YouTuber, whoever else that's watching this, uh, that you, you look up to, make sure they watch this video and make sure that they understand what this is. And hopefully you can ask them to publish it on my behalf because people need to know this. People need to be educated on this. And I feel as if there's a deficit of that going on in the community. So thank you again for the time. I appreciate it. Kyle, you have the last word. Say something funny or whatever. <laughs> oh man you put me on the spot yeah yeah no i'm still sleepy i got nothing i'm on the other side of the world right now so yeah. i was in career I... so all right guys thanks so much talk to you guys soon thanks for uh stopping by and watching bye